Hey, this is Jeff from the Cyber Pro Podcast. If you notice the background is a little bit different today, that's because we are at the Pacific Hackers Conference in Mountain View, California, and we're doing some live, although recorded, podcasts uh, for the next few days. So this is our friend Girish. He is the CTO and co-founder of a company named Colfi. We're going to talk a little bit about some Web3 applications that he's working on with his company coming up. Good afternoon. Uh, Hey, hey guys, uh, this is Girish, by the way, and thanks, Jeff, for uh, hosting me uh, in today's program. Wonderful. Can you tell our audience a little bit about who you are? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, okay. Definitely. Uh, um, I'll keep it like, try to make it very simple, like, you know, so everybody can relate to the problem we're solving. Um, like, we are doing a Web3 keyboard protocol. So when I say, like, keyboard, it's like a virtual keyboard that you use in day-to-day -day activities uh, in iOS, Android, phones uh, to just like type and like, you know, uh, chat with your friends. So uh, first generation is the, the alphabet keyboard, A to Z and 1 to 0. And the second generation are like multimedia keyboards where you have some GIFs, stickers, some, some memes that you can see on the keyboards and you can share. And what we are working on a third generation keyboard where a keyboard has a embedded like a wallet connected to it. You can check your balance and you can access your uh, Web3 assets. In Web3, like digital assets are like uh, very tightly bonded with uh, uh, with, with, with your uh, accounts. So the, these keyboards are like easy way to access them. That's what we do. And uh, it's called Kulfi. So we're building a protocol uh, for, for web three keyboards. Awesome. Awesome. We talked a little bit of, before we started recording about the customization mm -hmm. that we can do, whether it be geo mm -hmm. customization or even a personal customization, it can be deployed live, mm -hmm. uh, within an environment. And because of where web three is going with decentralization being the, the, the keyword, um, we're able to share the keyboards that we develop mm -hmm. and earn mm -hmm. uh, from the development that we do. Let's right. talk about that for a little. Sure, definitely, right? Like uh, you mentioned, like you know, it's a, it's a multi-fold problem we're talking now. Uh, like you know, one of the aspect is like in the current keyboard, there is no personalization experience in, in keyboards. It's like it's just to a level. It's just like very uh, uh, forced right now. Too so, rigid. Too too rigid, and it's not easy to. Uh, create a personalized experience for like you know uh, for a uh, for like a, a million people uh, in an automated way. Like you know, we need to collect data first, and you need to provide a, choose a good rules, and you can cannot just like push any content on their face, right? So, uh, so personalization is one problem uh, that we're solving, and also uh, performance. Like you know, we need like you know uh, very uh, very fully powerful keyboards in Web three. So, uh, like you know, that's one one problem, and security is one problem. So, in in regular keyboards, there is no security. Like you know, you just log in as a default user. They profile you, and they can track in in Web three. Like you know, you can log in with a wallet. So, there is like an inbound, uh, inbuilt security in the mechanism in in a Web three way of uh, uh, communication on the internet. So, I think uh, like keyboards are a, a very are going to be very powerful uh, in in Web three where you have a wallet right next to it. Awesome, awesome. You said something about security and that makes me think about, and decentralization. Both of those make me think about how how and where we are today and potentially some of the challenges that you might face you know, because we live in web two right now and it's all about big data, right? All the companies are going after our data because they want to control what we see and what we do and what we buy. And there are some governments in the world mm -hmm. that try to control that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they're generally in the APAC, but we won't mention them. <laughs> so, so knowing that right now, we know where we want to go. We know the power that Web3 brings. But where we are today mm -hmm. is we're kind of still in Web2. Right. And that means that large corporations and potential nation states want to control our data. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they kind of lose this with decentralization. Mm -hmm. So how do we how how do we handle that? How do we make that jump? Uh, I I have a couple of perspectives here, a uh, couple of points that makes uh, this conversation stronger. Um, 
Mm. I came from a third world country, like uh, like India, right? Like for me, the cost is the most important thing. Uh, so if I use the web tool stack, uh, like AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, I'm, I'm paying like X amount of money. If I use a web three stack, the cost is like kind of 90% down. I pay only like 10% and 100% uptime. Okay. Uh, so uh, cost is like, you know, like why, why we choose, everybody choose cloud? Like you know, instead of maintaining our own servers, because it's cost efficient and it's effective in terms of performance uptime, it's just like more reliable, right? So that is fundamental in Web3. Like, you know, like it's more more uh, distributed means like, you know, the funds are going to be like, you know, maintained by peer-to-peer -peer network and, and the cost is down. Uh, and uh, like, if you see like, you know, why like Web3 is, you know, how many times Ethereum uh, was down since 2015, you know? Many? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> okay. Zero is the answer. Okay. Ethereum was never down since 2015. Okay. How many times WhatsApp was down? Right. Everyone knew, but uh, like, you know, like uh, Web3, like, you know, I don't have to worry about, like, you know, I don't have to wake up in the middle of the night and say, like, hey, are you able to do a transaction? These are, like, day-to-day -day problems of developers, right? So, so developers has, like, you know, different problems to worry of, and, like, you know, some of problems are, like, fundamentally taken care, and Privacy and security are a big aspect of it. Once you're on a wallet, you don't have to disclose your details unless you need like a KYC for you know taking out some money. But you don't have to show off every keyboard stroke that you use. And on average, every person opens keyboard for like sixty to seventy times per day. Per day. Per day. And and you see like you saw like Brave, right? Brave was a browser on Web three, or not on Web three. It's just like a internet browser where they pay you like $100 every year if you tell them, if you give them like, you know, your browser uh, history access. So same way, there is the same kind of dynamics in your keyboard usage. You don't have to be a loyal user for a keyboard uh, and, and be like, you know, uh, and not getting the reward for being a loyal user for a, a keyboard. Uh, so that, and, and with, with Web3, like I said, like cost is effective. Uh, privacy, there is like, you know, absolutely like the phenomenal end to end encryption, encryption that can be done, and your keyboard is connected to blockchain, so it's more safer than like, you know, uh, like storing uh, it meant like, no, just like disclosing your data, like keyboard activity. Yeah. So that, and so that brings us to the final question, and a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. you. Now you've already folded into the word blockchain into the conversation, right? And we know, generally speaking, the immutability of the record keeping as well as the uh, preventability for anyone to go in there and modify anything without everybody seeing it. So those two things being said, mm -hmm. how does that help or benefit what you're doing at your company with the keyboard? Right, right. So uh, keyboard is input output mechanism so it's pretty much like it's like a gateway to your uh hardware device like a mobile phone or it's like a gateway to a to a metaverse so it's like we call it like a gateway um and uh so it's like a fundamental problem for every app and dap like distributed apps on like a metaverse game or anything so every team they have to again like uh, spend their own time and resources within their project to solve this problem, resolve the problem that we already solved and like have best practices on how to handle it. So instead of solving the reinventing the wheel, they can use the RSDK, plug it and build on top of it. So we are drastically reducing uh, like, you know, four to six weeks, like you know, for a lean team to have just like, they don't touch keyboards. If you, if you talk to any developer, they don't generally touch keyboards unless they're like very good at and these are like behavior habits, right? So there is a lot of expertise we put in, like uh, in terms of how the design and UI UX should be, and uh, uh, and that's the reason we also made this uh, open source protocol. So all our designs are like available on on Git repos, and all our designs also like you know best practices designs are are available on Figma. So developers can fork, you can contribute and all, but uh, we have you can also deploy on your own servers, or you can deploy our own infrastructure. To run, to run this code and uh, connect the keyboard in like half a day or like, you know, one day. We're reducing four to six weeks of your development time with version 1.0 to 
with like you know one day you can have all analytics and you can take some really good insights and actionable decisions uh, on how you want to analytics quick uh, quickly from from day one. Right. So we're reducing the development time with with our SDKs and and we're talking about like Web three kind of cloud SDKs. Right. So these are like very real time in nature. You can update a configuration from your mobile phone and deploy it and stuff like. Waiting, you know. Yeah, I, I think one of the key takeaways you just said, and just to re- repeat it, is that your developing time drops by ninety percent or more, and thereby your costs will drop by ninety ninety five percent. And when you're talking about a developing world, and you said cost is king, and then all of a sudden we have some. Of course, like every day, <laughs> yeah, because we know how much we're paying AWS every month. Right. Like you know, as long as we have VCs, like. I, but it's a different conversation. I don't want to go with it. But uh, cost is like you know, something like developers and enterprises need to keep in mind. Cost, privacy, security. This is like all built in. But uh, there are some different problems we run into on the new uh, onboarding is a big problem. So uh, and and we're making uh, a keyboard for Web three. It's like a keyboard for like a billion people. So we're bringing Web three to the masses mm. through through a keyboard experience. Mm. Iterating faster and a much lower cost. Wonderful. As a developer, like you know, Web three is all about developers. So we empower developers to uh, reduce their development times. Uh, you know, measure what you uh, build and 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 iterate fast. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Jeff, for giving the stage and uh, good luck to a Cyber Pro uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you made it to the end. Thanks so much. For more episodes, you can find them here.